That is sour. I've redecorated the room again to this nice gray color. Before it was a horrible yellow color and I desaturated the yellow because I lo it looked minging. So it's a lick of paint and hopefully it looks a little bit more like the office that I've always wanted. I am torn with one thing though and I need your opinion on it. Do you prefer it like this or with that? Because to me that just looks like, oh we need a lamp in the corner. <laughs> However, I think I need to fill both sides. I don't know. Let's have it in because we're not going to be looking at me for the majority of this video. Today we're hopping into Adobe Premiere Pro and I'm going to show you a really quick tip on how to match different colour profiles within a camera or if you're using different cameras. I shoot with multiple cameras and even though they're all Panasonic they sometimes look a little bit different in terms of their colour and what they reproduce. Some people might have two different cameras for two different reasons such as a Sony and a Panasonic. One for low light, one for video specs. So the aim of this video is to really quickly go through how to match two different colour profiles together. Let's just hop straight into Adobe Premiere Pro, show you how I've got things set up and what I do to get them looking the same. So on screen now I've got the four different areas that I would use in order to do this properly. I've got my Lumetri scopes, I've got my program monitor, Lumetri colour and then of course my timeline. In order to do this all you need in your Lumetri scopes is your RGB waveform and your YUV vector scope. If you can't see those, if you right click on the Lumetri scopes panel, click vector scope YUV, this one will come up and click waveform RGB and this one will come up. In your program monitor, what you need to have enabled is something called comparison view. As standard, you won't see this appear along the bottom row of these icons here. So if you can't, if you click on the little plus button in the corner and then look for this one. And if you hover over it, it says comparison view. Drag that down into this panel, click OK, and there it is. What this does is it brings up a reference image alongside where you are in your timeline at that current time. So the one on the left is set to zero seconds, so right at the beginning, which is this first clip. And that's good because I want to be comparing my first picture profile to the other two, which I'm going to match up. The three picture styles that I've chosen to shoot this test in is Natural, which is one of my favorites, Cine Light D and Vlog. Now, bear in mind Vlog is an added upgrade, so you won't get that standard in your camera. However, you can choose to pay extra. What Vlog does is gives you 12 stops of dynamic range, so it gives you more flexibility when working in post, doing things such as this. I will say at this point, I've not lit this shot for a particular reason. When I'm shooting weddings, which is the majority of my work at the moment, I don't necessarily get the time to light what I want to film. So I'd rather be doing these tests with no additional lighting, to make sure that it still works. There are differences in exposure with the sun peeping in and out, so bear that in mind, but in terms of coloring, that's what we're focusing on. So this is the natural profile. I've added a little bit of color correction and a little bit of contrast just to bring out those colors a little bit. To be fair, I've shot this with the contrast and saturation dialed down from its original natural profile. So really all I've done is just brought that back to what it would typically look like straight out of camera. Let's look at Cine Light D. So you can tell there's a lot less contrast than before. A lot of people do like to shoot this because it gives you a little bit more dynamic range. However, I've not really shot with this that much. I find the natural profile good enough for me. And then finally, we've got the V-Log. Let me just full screen that. As you can tell, this is extremely flat. However, the dynamic range is still there in the window. None of the shadows are crushed and it's just completely flat and it gives me loads of room to match. So let's hop out of full screen mode. Let's enable comparison view. So now we can start comparing the different shots. Let's start with this Cine Light D1 that we're gonna to match to the natural profile. Let's quickly open up the Lumetri as well. What I did forget to mention is if I just bring this out a little bit more like that, when comparison view is enabled, you can see both of the waveforms for both of the shots that are in that comparison view. So if you only want to see the values of one clip, make sure comparison view is disabled and then that shows this image in your program. However, like I said, if you enable comparison view, this changes to a dual view of these RGB waveforms. So bear that in mind, these are both readings from both of these clips, not one. I'm not gonna show you this too much because this isn't the point of this video. However, what I'm gonna do is quickly match the contrast values and the saturation values of these clips so they look the same by checking in line with my waveform. So let's quickly add a little bit of exposure slight bit of contrast. I mean, to be fair, even there, it's already starting to look similar. These green midtones are already at a similar height. Let me just drop the highlights a little bit like that. There is a lot of going back and forth when you color grade and that's absolutely fine. By making one tiny tweak somewhere, you might end up having to just tweak something else that you might have already done previously just to level it out a little bit. To be fair, my shadows are now looking a bit too pink. So let's hop back into this, move it away from the pink. And you can see there that they're starting to match a little bit more. Let me bring up those mids to bring, where well you can see this red, green and blue, I'm just gonna bring the mids up just so that matches it, somewhere like that. And like I said, just drop those shadows a little bit more, stretching those colors out 
a little bit more and more. Pretty quickly, we've already got a very similar waveform comparison between the two clips, and that's what we want to be looking for. Now let's go over to the vector scope, and this is where I'm gonna show you how to match the colors. If we full screen it at this point, they're pretty similar in terms of contrast. However, if you look closely, the colors are slightly different between the two, which is surprising, like I said, because it's from the same camera. For example, if you look at the lamp here, it's a nice gold looking color. Whereas in the Cinelite D, it's starting to look a little bit greener and it's not very nice and realistic. Again, with the reds, the reds in this book on the left-hand side of the natural profile look pretty much like what the book looks like in real life. However, on the right-hand side, it's almost edging towards orange rather than red. And this is where you match the colors between two different cameras or profiles. To do this, hop into the curves tab in Lumetri and then go down to hue versus hue. I'm gonna add a keyframe on each of these vertical lines that you can see here as so what these vertical lines represent are the colors that you can see in the vector scope tell you what let me just disable this waveform now so you can see the vector scope more clearly so this yellow box here is the exact color that is in line with this vertical axis on the hue versus hue chart again with the green the greens there with the cyan or cyan 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 it goes in line with that and etc with the blue the pink and the red if we look closely, you can see two spikes coming out, especially from the reds and the yellows. Those are prime examples of where the differences in hue or color are between the two different profiles. While still staying on the vertical line within your hue versus hue, drag one of your keyframes and move them around up and down. By doing this, you can see that the yellow value on my Cinelite D footage is moving around. So all you need to do is drag it in line with the other, like that, simple as that. Do that for the remaining five colors if they're all out of line. However, it seems like it's just the red on this one. So let me move them around again, like that. You can see that the yellow is shifting again. And like I said earlier, that's just because if you tweak one area, something else might move as well. So it's just stretching those colors out further. That's all we're doing. So I've moved the red in line and I'm just gonna do the same with the yellow again, back a little bit there. It's probably worthwhile just checking the other colors just to check if something's hidden because I know these vector scopes can be quite difficult to analyze. I'd say that's pretty much the same now. If you really want to match them with saturation as well, you can do so. I'll just do that really quickly. It's the same process, simply adding a keyframe onto each of these vertical lines like so. And this is hue versus saturation. So what it's doing is it's looking for a color and then dragging this down will desaturate it, dragging it up will saturate it further. As long as it's in a similar region, something like that. I'm happy with that because if we full screen this now, hopefully these two are looking a lot more similar. If anything, that yellow is a bit too saturated compared to that area. So let me just bring that down again. Probably didn't need to do it that much. There we go, let's full screen that. So now the lamp especially looks completely similar. Whereas before this was quite green, now it's looking like that nice gold color again. The greens are looking quite similar as well and the reds have also matched up. And that's purely because we've changed those hue shifts. There are other ways to do it in Premiere, don't get me wrong. However, hue versus hue I find is one of the easiest ways to match them. And it's easiest to visualize as you're doing it as well, which is really helpful. If I disable this curves panel, you can see those differences in color. So before, after before, after. I'm not sure how well this will come out on YouTube once it's all compressed. However, there is a definite difference and I'm happy to show a link online of an image if you want to really look into them both. Let me just do it with the Vlog profile really quickly as well to show you that it's not just a one-off. I might fast forward this bit just because Vlog is a lot more time consuming. I will publish a video that is purely dedicated to color correcting and grading Vlog footage. So subscribe if you want to look out for that. However, this is more intermediate color correction. So I'm not gonna dabble too much into that for this particular video. No, I'll resist. <laughs> I'm fine with my cloudy lemonade. Oh, trying to do it really quick before he starts singing again. It's already getting there, but as you can tell, some areas are a lot greener, even more than the Cine Light D footage. But we know what we're doing now. We'll hop into Hue versus Hue, adjust those yellows and reds, and then we should be somewhere similar. This is very quick, so it might not be as accurate. However, I just want to show you how simple it is. Add the keyframes along all six areas. Check the vector scope, so I'll hide the waveform for now. Once again, you can see the two different spikes in the yellows and the reds especially. So let's move these yellows around 
to make them match like that. Do the same with the reds. Let's go back a bit, so around there. Bring that yellow back again because it's stretched them out. You can see two spikes, one there and one there. So let's do the same with the greens. It's all trial and error this and you will get the hang of it, I do promise. And already it's looking much more similar and it's a very quick way to do it. However, it's extremely effective as you can see. And once again, if I full screen this, that's what it was before, that's what it is now. And it's looking much more similar before, horrible and green, and now a lot more similar. That shows a quick way for you to change the colour between different pitch profiles or different cameras even um, to make them look a lot more cohesive. I've got two minutes left on the card, so I need to hurry up and say goodbye. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit intermediate, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit advanced for some people who are getting into colour correction and grading. However, I hope you understood it. I hope it helps you at some point in the future when you're colour correcting and colour grading. If you've got any ideas for other episodes that you'd like me to do, please feel free to comment down below and I'll have a look through them and I'll see what I can do. So in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. So warm. Oh, by the way, <laughs> that's a completely empty photo frame if you haven't already noticed. Uh, I've not got anything to put in it yet, but I thought it looked nice. In fact, what if we swap these around? And it looks less obvious. This isn't even mine either. Oh, why didn't I have that to start with?